Thank you for watching this video on CA Workload Automation iDash CA7 SLA with Schedule ID 0. In this video, we'll demonstrate setting up a CA7 SLA with Schedule ID 0. Click Catalog, then select SLA Management. Click the Create SLA button and enter a job name or pattern. Select the job you'd like from the list and click the Create SLA button. Almost all of the parameters on the Create SLA screen function exactly the same way for an SLA on Schedule ID 0 as they would for an SLA with a specific Schedule ID. The only difference will be in the date scheduling parameters. As we can see on this screen, the default Schedule ID for all of the available date parameter choices is now 0 rather than the lowest available Schedule ID. For CA7, Schedule ID 0 has a special meaning. This is used to signify that any run will match the requirement. In iDash, this special meaning is preserved. When an SLA is created with Schedule ID 0 as the required Schedule ID, any run of the job that happens within the run validity window for the SLA will cause the SLA to be met. When forecasting job runs to predict SLA status, if there are any predicted runs within the SLA's run validity window, the SLA will be predicted to be met. As with previous releases of iDash, the default date scheduling choice remains days of the week, with all days selected. If you wish for the SLA not to be monitored on any day of the week, simply uncheck the box next to that day. You may leave the SLA Schedule ID as zero so that any run of the job on the selected days in the Run Validity window will meet the requirements of the SLA, or you may choose a specific Schedule ID so that only a run of that Schedule ID will meet the SLA requirements. Now that we have introduced SLAs for Schedule ID 0 with the Days of the Week option, we will demonstrate the way Schedule ID 0 works for jobs with schedules or jobs triggered by other scheduled jobs. When we select the CA7 Schedule ID Date Scheduling option, we can see that this job has two schedules, Schedule ID 1 and Schedule ID 2. By selecting Schedule ID 1 and clicking the calendar icon, we see that this job will run every Sunday on Schedule ID 1. Selecting Schedule ID 2 and clicking the calendar shows us the job will run every Saturday on Schedule ID 2. When we select Schedule ID 0 and click the calendar icon, we see that iDash combines the two schedules and will monitor the SLA for this job on both Saturday and Sunday. When we select the Triggering Job option as the Date Scheduling option, we see that there are two jobs with schedules that will trigger our SLA job to run, iDemo002 and iDemo003. iDemo002 has two schedules. Schedule ID 1 will trigger the job on Mondays and Wednesdays. Schedule ID 2 will trigger the job on Tuesdays and Thursdays. iDemo003 has only one schedule, and that will trigger our job to run on Fridays. When we select one of the triggering jobs, we must select one of that job's Schedule IDs as the triggering job Schedule ID. The SLA Schedule ID will automatically be set to match the triggering job Schedule ID, but you may override this choice with any other Schedule ID, including Schedule ID 0. Selecting Schedule ID 0 for the SLA Schedule ID means that any run of the SLA job in the Run Validity window will satisfy the SLA, but the SLA will still only be monitored on days indicated by the triggering job Schedule ID. There is one more option available in the Triggering Job drop-down box, All. This option is equivalent to Schedule ID 0, but for triggering jobs. When you select this option, the Triggering Job Schedule ID is set to 0 and may not be changed. With this option, iDash will monitor the SLA on any day that any Schedule ID on any of the jobs that trigger the SLA job will run. In this case, we click the calendar icon and see that the SLA will be monitored Monday through Friday, 
combining all of the days from both jobs and all three schedules that trigger the SLA job. By default, selecting all for the triggering job will set the SLA schedule ID to zero, but you may select a different schedule ID if you wish. For our demonstration, we will select the triggering job option and all for the triggering job. We will take the default SLA schedule ID of zero so that any run of the SLA job will satisfy the requirements. We will add a time condition and save the SLA. As with any other SLA, the selected parameters may be changed later by navigating to the SLA definition, clicking the Actions button, and selecting Edit. This concludes the video. To learn more about this product, connect with other users, and share your own expertise, visit the CA Workload Automation community at the URL shown. Thank you.